To better understand what follows, knowing the layout of the Stauk residence is helpful. The house, at 6627 Mandan Drive, is a multi-level home that the Stauks were renting. The main level of the home included the kitchen, dining area, the family room, as well as Lena's bedroom and the master bedroom. Downstairs, like a lot of Midwestern homes, was a furnished basement that acted like a second level. The basement level had two bedrooms, Gannon's and Harley's, and a shared living space that included a sofa, a television, and a Peloton exercise bike, as well as a closet used for storage. This will help to understand upcoming text and events spoken about upstairs and downstairs. Also, two puppies were added to the Stalk family right before Christmas. An English bulldog, named Chance after Harley's biological father, and Sadie, a French bulldog. Letitia and Harley mention the dogs often in their texts and in statements. During the following events, Al is in Oklahoma training at Fort Sill. Letitia, Gannon, and Lena are at home after the hike, and Harley is still at work. Sunday evening, January 26th, through early morning, Monday, January 27th. What is known for sure is that sometime between when the family returned home at 4.46 and 9.46 p.m., Gannon was burned. Letitia tells several variations of the story, but the gist of each involved Gannon asleep on a couch, a candle catching blankets on fire, and her rescuing him from the flames. What follows are four different accounts of the candle incident told by Letitia. The first is from an interview with Detective Bethel two days after Gannon went missing. The second from an FBI pretext recorded phone call with Albert on February 13th. The third from the day of her arrest during FBI Agent Grusing's interview, and the final account, played at trial, taken from a psychiatric evaluation while she was in custody. Listen to how the sequence of events differ. For small details to change, for example, if she saw smoke before or after she grabbed Lena, or if she wore a dust mask. Also, Letitia takes every opportunity to make herself seem loving and patient while painting Albert as irrational and crazy. So Gannon had started a candle. Again, normal. They, he's very like responsible in terms of like uh, if you give him something and say do this, do this, this, and this, and like a list to prepare, it's fine. So we let him, you know, do things like that. Like Albert lets him like use the box cutter to cut the boxes down, you know, and like teach him things to be like a independent growing up adolescent. So I didn't see a problem with him, you know, light a candle, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. Well, I don't remember the exact time. I'd have to look at uh, when the fire thing went off. Um, I was tired. Albert had left because we, so we spent the whole night up prior with Saturday because he was going to train in Oklahoma. So we stayed up most of the night. Okay. You know, just everybody was going to miss each other, wouldn't see each other for a while, whatever. So I was kind of like, you know, tired. I had dozed off for a little bit. Stand that. So I let her stay up longer than she's supposed to. It was like, a, you know, not necessarily bribery, but, you know. So she stayed up a little bit later. And uh, so she was still kind of, she's a very hard sleeper. And she's hard to, like, pick up, move if she falls asleep, whatever. But she, I could tell she was just barely asleep when I went in there. So it starts beeping like a beep 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 and I thought that someone was coming in the house so I I look and not see anyone at any doors or hear anything so I was like it's I thought it was just a sensor so I hit in our 2564 which is our alarm code but it didn't go off and I was like what is wrong with this thing so I walked to Lena's room because the alarm is in her room and I walk back like through the top part of the house and you've been in the house so you know the top part of the house I haven't been in there okay so there's the upper level and then there's the below basement so I like walk back and forth or whatever I didn't see anything going on then it started saying fire fire 
fire, fire, fire. Like it kept, it kept saying fire. Oh wow. So, uh, and I, and I thought it was the, uh, um, you know how like you, so there's like sensors for your fire alarm and then there's sensors for your like uh, alarm alarm. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to everything trying to like fan it why it was going off because I was thinking kitchen, fire, nothing's wrong, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was putting like towels over some of the sensors because I thought that was like monitoring the fire thing, whatever. And then I realized it kept going and going. So then I see smoke coming up from the downstairs. So I run downstairs and my idea of a big fire is anything that I see on fire pretty much in their smoke, you know, just, that's just because I grew up in the country, so, you know, like, I've never bonfires and, like, things like that, you know. So, uh, there was smoke coming up through the basement. So, the basement has, so like, you walk down the basement, and there's a sofa and stuff over here. It was coming up through the basement. So, I, like, run back up the stairs, go grab Lane, and luckily, my point telling you about her being not a rough sleeper, she woke right up. So she wrote back up and I and I like almost like grabbed her and I was like, Get up, get up, get up, get up. I said, I gave her the keys. I said, Can you go I don't remember the exact order, but I said something along the lines of, Can you go take the dogs to Daddy's truck and sit there and wait? Right. So I don't remember the order of how we all ran out the house. But I know that at that point I did. She ran out and I can't remember if I ran out to make sure they got the truck or if she ran out by herself. I don't remember that part. But I do know that they were I know that they were had gotten in the truck. I came back inside, run back downstairs, and that's when I was trying to get Gannon because I couldn't get, I, I didn't know how to get everybody at once. So my main thing was to get the front people out, you know, and then go. So then I ran back downstairs to get Gannon. And then the fire was on the floor over here, then on the sofa. So I'm pretending this is the sofa and this is our floor. So it was right here and right here. And I had saw the candle that was over here. So there was covers everywhere because the kids always get on them about, I leave a lot of covers laying around all the time. I mean, there's like tin quilts and LOLs and blankets and all this. So they were all right here. So I take a whole bunch of them and I go and like, 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 basically smash down on the sofa and the um, fire to put it out. So I got a, a burn and then I was like, get up again and started running at that point because it wakes him up. He's alert. He's realizing that the covers and everything's on fire, the carpet's on fire, and we all go outside. So we get it in Albert's truck and we drive off and I drove off in panic because I saw that I put the fire out so I knew that there was no you know like nothing wrong like it wasn't keep going I drove off in panic because I was like oh my gosh what do I do now like we break the carpet you know we done this and this Gannon's upset freaking out because he's scared he's gonna get in trouble and and da 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 so you know like the whole talk was going on so we drove maybe around the block a little bit and came right back so we came back in and like develop a plan for the next day to figure out honestly we were going to face the like fix the carpet and try to like not say anything. And the reason for that is because like Albert freaks out about every little thing if the kids do something and I I'm on like it's me and he'll be like you didn't do this, you weren't being a good stepmom, you weren't doing this, you weren't doing that. And so we both kind of were like a little like worried about it and he gets very like crazy like if something goes wrong so that was the plan go to sleep rest he was going to stay out of school we we're going to get the carpet fixed and then go from there plus his stomach was hurting so lena didn't want to uh sleep in her room you know everybody was still kind of like frazzled and i think lena slept with me or on the sofa i brought the dogs up and again he wanted to go in his room at that point because he was already sleeping on the sofa Okay. So that's where Sunday, uh, like, pretty much kind of, like, stopped and everybody went to bed and yada, yada, yada. And I, I think I sent Albert messages because uh, he was sleeping, that was on a different time zone, and he didn't see him that night, though. Okay. And I didn't feel that no one was in harm. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure I say that because the fire was not, the fire was not going. Now, I know that Gannon had, like, black marks all on his shirt, like, like, like smoke marks. But he had on a long sleeve shirt and a short mm -hmm. sleeve shirt because he sometimes he has on whatever. So he had on a short sleeve, a long sleeve, a short sleeve shirt with a long sleeve shirt. Um, so I didn't see him in any kind of like nothing other than the little burns that we had. I didn't see. Where did you see burns on Gannon? Burn. All right. So with Gannon, I just saw that. Okay. So like on the top, like right here. So like say the shirts right here. So like right here there was a burn, and and the reason for that was I think whenever like he was trying to come up, he kind of. I'm sorry. It kind of burned him a little bit. I'm not going to make an assumption. I don't really know. And 
as far as that, I didn't see anything else. Like, I, I didn't know any, like, other differences or anything like that. All I saw was that. I saw you okay. He ran out the house. He was firing out the house. Everything was normal. Yada, yada, yada. Now, I'm going to let you know in a little bit why he was bleeding. Okay. But at that point, when you get to the Monday morning thing, I'll let you know about that. Describe the flames for me. How <laughs> how tall are these flames? Is it, like, smoldering on the carpet, sort of kind of creeping across like a grass fire? Or is it, like, coming up, working its way up the couch? Like, how is it well, looking? Well, it's... I really don't know. I know that it was like here centralized on on the floor but like I could see I think the smoke might have like kind of intimidated me more because I spent the whole night coughing so I think that that kind of intimidated me so much because I couldn't the visibility was starting to be a little bit you know like as if I had walked into a small little fire <coughs> now and, and I was just afraid that it was gonna because you know like upholstery for the couch that was my biggest concern was the upholstery for the couch so Okay. So I would say, you know, it was like maybe like in this area, like right here. It wasn't like here. So the flame, the flames were, you know, two, three feet high. You think? How much light did you see coming off of this through the smoke? I don't know. Okay, and that's fine if you don't know. I'm not really. I'm not like a professional. To, and I was in the moment of freaking out to like okay. give you an accurate answer. Sure. Of because I don't want to tell you what's here. Then it might have been here. I don't want to tell you this, 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 and it's. I, I don't know. This is all <laughs> based off of your memory to the best of your ability. Right, right. And that's all right. it is. Okay. I do know that I saw covers coming up on fire. What was the co what covers were on coming up on fire? Like he had a cover on because he was he was sleeping on the sofa. What, so what the was sofa. he covered with? What do you mean? What kind of blanket? You you had mentioned there was LOLs, there was quilts. Oh, there was like which color? Which blanket? kind of what blanket was he using? Oh, I'm not sure. There was a couple that were there. There was a black. They were all, some of them, I put them all back in that bin that was sitting there. Did you, he said you didn't I know. haven't been in the Okay, so there was no. black, it was like a little furry, there was watermelon ones. I don't remember specifically which one he had, but I know that there was blankets in the area because they always leave blankets around. It was a mermaid one around. But the whole collaboration of when I grabbed them and put it out, I grabbed them all and done it. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Were any of them, like, damaged whenever that happened? Oh, yeah, they all, <coughs> I, le I left them all there when I showed them that night that, you know, like, they were damaged or whatever. Okay. Like, well, I have came right back. So we came back in and, like, developed a plan for the next day to figure out, honestly, we were going to face the, like, fix the carpet and try to, like, not say anything. And the reason for that is because... Like, Albert freaks out about every little thing if the kids do something and I, I'm on, like, it's me, and he'll be like, you didn't do this, you weren't being a good stepmom, you weren't doing this, you weren't doing that, and so we both kind of were, like, a little, like, worried about it, and he gets very, like, crazy, like, if something goes wrong. So then I was, like, freaked out, because I was like, I didn't know that, that his arms or, or like that so I'm like crying because mm -hmm. and and this is where I have to start telling you you know like some like very like I was scared because my thought process was Albert is going to kill me like because I made a mistake as a parent and mm -hmm. forgot to like really check him down and he really got a little bit more burned than he should have mm -hmm. so I was freaking out because it's like he's gonna kill me and Gannon's like it's okay and like it, there was blood and like he had on his arm and, and as it was peeling and I, I, I should have called what did he have blood I, sh at? I should have called the hospital and just asked you know I don't know enough about burns but I should have called the hospital and just asked like I made a mistake I didn't I swear to y'all I didn't know they were that bad I did okay. it all so I feel horrible. So here I am. I know it's not you know about me, but as a person, I was feeling horrible that I didn't, I didn't call Albert to say, you know, they're like this. So I told him, I said, okay, listen, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some like aloe on your arms, you know, and things like that. And I was like, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna, you know. And all I kept thinking about was we're gonna fix it. And I don't know in my mind how I was gonna fix it. As far as the he 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 wasn't in pain. He wasn't saying like 
I'm hurting or, or anything like that. He was more of like peeling it, like you know, like it was like Mexican. almost like it was like a boy. Is, am I saying the right word? Boil, like blister, like a blister. So I'm gonna say like he was pulling a blister, you know. Okay. Well, then out of nowhere, I, the alarm is going off. It didn't start with anything other than the alarm. Lena had laid down. I had went in the room. I was sitting there with the dogs. I don't remember exactly what I was doing. But I was doing something on Roku. And I hear the alarm go off. So I walk in the living room, hit the alarm code in. And I'm just like, dee -dee -dee -dee, alarm code. And it stopped. So I thought, who in the world, you know, was on the alarm code? Then it beeped again. And it kept going. And it, then it started fire. It was yelling louder. Fire. 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 And I'm just like, fire. And I look around. Don't see any flipping fire anywhere. So as this goes on, I'm like, okay, put the code in again, it stops. So I'm like, okay, I might get on the phone with ADT because something's wrong with this thing. Remember when we were out of town, the neighbor said she smelled gas and her thing was going off, but then they didn't find anything. Yeah, yeah, right. So I was thinking maybe it's something to do with this. So that was how my whole process was. So then at that point, I was like, the carbon the main, monoxide thing started beeping. And I ran in there where Lena was at, and I said, Lena, Lena, are you asleep? Because I knew, unless I was under some adrenaline rush, and this is not being mean, I wasn't going to be able to just pick get Lena up and yank her out of bed. But ha luckily, she hadn't fell asleep all the way. And I said, Lena, because I thought I was being crazy. I said, do you hear that? It said fire, right? She's like, yes. And so I grabbed Lena, run her outside, run her with the dogs, give her the keys to the truck, throw them in the truck. And I run back inside. Run back inside, still don't know anything. And then remember, oh my God, Dan. Sorry that for a second I hadn't remembered that because I was trying to still figure out where in the heck a fire was at. So I run back downstairs and realized that there's smoke downstairs. I couldn't get, I was coughing and choking and couldn't like get through the smoke part. I run back to the garage. You had these little mouthpieces that you could put over your mouth. Yeah, yeah, it does protect okay. man. Right, so I grabbed one of those, put it over my mouth, ran back downstairs, and when I ran back downstairs, again, I was still asleep, not knowing this was going on, and there was fire. I took the cover. There was a whole bunch of tons of cover that was inside that little tan thing, and Gannon had on or whatever, and I just jumped on them. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. If it was the wrong thing to do, I'm sorry. But I just jumped on it and kept jumping on it, and, like, Gannon was wrapped in one of the covers so Gannon did burn his arms it wasn't bad it was like a almost like you know how you get a little bit of boil on it and it's just like underneath the skin but as long as y'all peel it it's fine yeah but, but, just, but hey Tisha which arm was it both arms or like this inside I mean but like how was it so because I remember we talked about that before a little bit but uh, you never we never honestly got I feel like it was across the arms like I feel like it was and I told the investigators this. I said, and I don't want to skip to this part and miss this part, but remember, remind me to say this later. I told the investigators later that I said, I probably should have looked a little more in depth at his arm. What if he's hurt? Could, yeah. Because, because it could have been, you know, like, he wasn't complaining, like, oh, it's hurting. He wasn't anything along those lines but i should have looked a little bit more in depth but honestly we ran so we ran out i'm sure they got the footage of us me running out first because gannon was grabbing his cover running out behind there because he was well, what, hey, what time was this so we can i can maybe tell somebody to look at the footage well i mean uh, I, I told them originally i don't have access to the adt now but i yeah, told yeah. them originally because the ADT said it had an alert for fire. So I would imagine whenever that alert went off from ADT, it mm -hmm. would have been within that within that few minutes. Yeah, like fine, I got you. Within 15 minutes. Um, hey, so, hey, tell me about it. Uh, so I'm really concerned about these burns because, you know, these freaking hurt. Like what? Right. What, what, what are they big? Were they small? Like what was it? Was it, was it from the candle wax or what? Let, let me get to that part. It's not going to worry you in a minute when I get to that part. Okay, because okay, I'm freaking out right now. Cause... Okay, I understand. So, when he runs to the car, he runs in because I'm running. He's running behind me. 
I jump in your truck. The only reason I jump in your truck is the keys were laying there. Okay. So I jump in your truck. He jumps in on the driver's side. He's screaming, crying, whatever. Lane is in the back seat with the two dogs. We crank your car, we turn your truck on, and we drive the hell off. Don't ask me why we drove off. I was freaked out because I was like, oh my God. Like, it was the carbon, it was the smoke was more more scary and terrifying than actually the fire. So, okay. we had to, all we did was we drove around the block, and I kind of had to be like, okay, what do I do? A, do I need to call the police department? B, does anybody need medical attention? So then, we go back in the house. Lena's freaked out. I put Lena in our bed. I said, whoa, whoa, Lena. So, I so you drove around and then came back? No, I drove around the block. Like, oh, Wando, I didn't hear around, that. Yeah, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I drove around, like, the block. Like, Wando, that area, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know. Back. Pull back up in the drive. You didn't have much gas because I hadn't put gas in your car yet. You didn't have much gas. Right. So uh, my, my process of driving was thinking, oh, my God. Like, I, I was in shock. So I pulled back in the driveway and parked. We all get back out, go inside. Lena goes, Lena's freaking out, crying. We're both, Lena and I are standing there looking at Dan. I didn't, at that point in time, I didn't see anything on his hands, arms, or anything other than take your hand where you're holding your phone and look on the insides where the edges are. That part right there had little bubbly spots, okay? So they had bubbly spots on both sides of his arm. And I think that was from when he grabbed the cover and I was trying to grab him up. And he came down with me with the cover because he was like latched onto the cover. Yeah, yeah. When I was, and I was trying to grab the whole cover to put out the fire. So from the inner parts of his arm had these little bubble spots. Which so so you time, said, but you said both sides or is it just the inner parts? I just trying to, because this might be key information. Both, like both sides, left arm, right arm. I got and you. Okay. Inner, so both sides of both arms. From what I remember, both sides yeah. of both arms, because he had, when, when Daniel was laying there and I grabbed him to get him up, okay, because I remember it was that, uh, oh God. It, it was one of the covers. I grabbed him to get him up, whatever. He, he gets in the car, whatever, we're talking, he's explaining to me that he thought I was coming and he was grounded from the switch. So he thought I was coming, and when he thought I was coming, he knocked over the candle. Okay. Because apparently he was playing the switch when he shouldn't have been playing it, which is fine. Was it? But he had the candle on the couch. No, he had uh. the candle sitting on some kind of little, uh, that little white thing that was sitting next to the couch. Okay. Oh, I got you. I, I got you. I got you. Right. So I don't know if the candle fell over. I don't know. I know that when I got there, there was a fire, and it was on his cover. So I was trying to rip the cover out of his hands to get him up and like jump on the fire. They have pictures of where there's burn marks on my elbow where I jumped on the fire. So we get in the car and he's crying and screaming and telling me he's sorry. He don't want to get in trouble because of the switch. He was on the switch and he shouldn't have been on the switch. And so we drive around the block and I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. Honestly, I flipping lost my mind because I thought my mind, like, had I not gotten downstairs when I did, had I not heard it or the alarm system or carbon monoxide or whatever, if that fire would have hit that couch, I don't know that I could have gotten again. And that was my, that was my biggest thing that my brain was sitting there, like, freaked out on. Come back inside. Lena's terrified. I said, Lena, go lay in the bed. She's laying in the bedroom. Dan was like, he, he doesn't want to go back to his room. I said, okay, will you lay in Lena's bed? He said, yes. He started to say he was cold and had a little bit of shivers. And so I was like, Gannon, I took him and put more clothes on top of him now. Blame it on me. Whatever. I didn't take his clothes off to go through anything, but I asked him, was he hurting? And was anything else? Whatever. He told me it was just his arms. So I didn't see anything that would have thrown a flag that I had to be like, oh, my God, emergency or, or anything like that. I didn't see anything like that. But if his so, arms was bubbling, that's not an emergency? Well, it, it, it hadn't broke skin. Like, it was just like underneath. It hadn't broke skin or whatever. Okay. And so All right. All right. In, my, in my mind, I'm like, 
okay, let, let's evaluate the situation, you know, tomorrow and see or whatever. It wasn't burn, burn marks like carpet burn or like, you know, anything like that. It, it was bubbly. And I told them from that, I said, I honestly, I probably could have, you know, got him in the car and said, hey, can you just check this out to make sure? Because I, it wasn't. In my mind, in his arms, I didn't see it as a as a bad thing. I just knew he was like, it's not hurting. We put aloe on it, and I assumed, okay. You, we had, I think I was upstairs, you know, Harley wasn't there. And Harley had to work until Junction New York. Like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Harley had to work until, I think it was like maybe 10, 15 years, so whatever. Um, and then, um, Gannon had, I think, what was he doing? He was doing something, I remember. So I go back upstairs. Then I hear the machine was saying, like, beep, 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 like, is the zone was coming in the house. Okay. So I put the code in thinking that the live alarm thing went off. There was no doors open or, you know, none of that stuff. No doors open. Um, so then I go back where Lady was at, and I see she was faking sleeping, but not really mm-hmm. sleeping. And then, um, but she had, like, the cover over her head a little bit. And so, like, she was doing, like, whatever. And so then I hear the thing saying fire. Does it actually say fire? It said fire. Okay. So that was the crazy thing because I never had heard. I didn't know what. I thought it would just be like. Right, like a siren. But I don't know if it was those detector things saying fire or if it was the actual um, machine thing saying fire. Um, but it was just like fire, 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 whatever. Um, so then I run back in there and I look and I see, I don't see anything, language or I don't see anything that looks downstairs and I don't see anything. Then it was just, it was still going. So I grab Lena, I'm going to tell you exactly wrong, but I'm pretty sure I grabbed Lena first and I grabbed the dog, I gave her the keys. I think that's how it went. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm sure it was in that order. Yeah. And we run out to the truck with the lake. Either I open the door, I don't remember. Somehow they get to to the trunk. Okay. Um, and then I run back downstairs because at this point I already know that there's there's smoke. And so I run back downstairs and run back downstairs and Deanna was awake but not awake. Like you know how you can almost like be asleep but not asleep type mm-hmm. thing. And so I, in his bed. No, no, no. He wasn't in his bed. Where was he? He was on the sofa. On the sofa. Right, right. So um, he was on the sofa. And so, like, when I pull the cover, I pull Gannon with the cover. And so, at this point in time, then I put the, the fire that's out. So, what did the fire look like? Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't like, huge. It Where was, was it? In the carpet? On the sofa? Uh, I feel like it was on, like, on the covers. On the covers? Was the cover on the sofa, though, or was it on the floor? Uh, I don't remember. I just remember it was in the small location. It wasn't a big enough fire to, to, I mean, like. Yeah, um, what color was it? Do you remember? Was it right yellow, red, red, orange? I don't remember what color. It wasn't in a color to, like, I mean, it wasn't a color. Was it because a, I think, what, blue burns the hottest, then you I have stuff, if stuff gets involved in the fire, you have a yellowish or reddish color. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> don't remember? I don't remember. Sir. How, can you show me how tall it was? Like, do you I remember? I don't remember. It wasn't tall wasn't tall? I don't feel like it was that tall. I mean, but my tall might be different than your tall, so I don't want to say. I don't still, a fire's going to freak you out. Right? right. Yeah. So, I, when I pull the cover, I pull um, him with the cover, too, and we run out. Did you put out the fire or no? I know that we took the covers, both of us. When, when he sees what's going on, we took the covers and, like, we smashed down on the... On the fire? Like, on it, yeah, because... My own thought was oxygen, put it out. Right. That was all I could think about. Like, you know, put it out, whatever, whatever. Did, did it take much? Sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> did did it take a lot to put it out or no? Or did you just smother it and then move? I don't know. Or was it, it something was, in between? You, was there what now? Something in between. You know, I'm, we, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. No. Something in between? Like in, in between, just it happened real quick or you had to fight it for a while? Or? Oh, it wasn't like fighting for a while. Like there was already a bunch of covers on the side that we had, t- that I had grabbed them all and put it here, which is why the whole thing was bottled with covers. There was okay. like different co- covers bottled up here. Where, so it was like stuff there. Um, and then I run and he's running behind me. So as I'm running up, he like trips or whatever. It's, but he's right behind me. Mm-hmm. So then I think I exit back out the garage, I feel like. 
Um, so the truck was in the garage. No, 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 no. It was out front. Was I'm out saying front. like I think I, I, I think I exited back out the garage. Okay. Um, because I feel like I just ran back to that door. I'm not, I, I'm not 100 percent positive. I know we ran out. Then Gana runs right, right out behind me, and when um, I'm, I turned around and I. I'm saying something to him because I'm like, hey, because in my mind, I, I don't remember if I had gotten the dogs, even though I had already right. had grabbed the dogs. And so, like, he's, I don't remember what we were saying, but we were all in a frantic, you know, whatever. He jumped in the driver's, I'm sorry, passenger side, and I'm in the driver's side of the truck. Okay. Lena is in the back, and at that point, we drive off. So, we drive off for, I don't know, like a minute, maybe, and then... Um, we drive back, but there's no gas in it. So was anybody burned from that? So Gannon you, had you or Gannon? Gannon or? had a little, like little burns on his arms uh, from that, and then um, but at the time, so Gannon always lays with like his uh, either was, like his underwear on or, mm -hmm. or like or like something like that. So um, at the time when we ran out, I feel like did he have a shirt? I don't remember if he grabbed a shirt or grabbed another cover uh, when we ran out or whatever. But I knew that he had some burns on his arm, but I knew they weren't, like, they weren't bad, like, burns that were bad. They were just, like, uh, if you peeled a little bit or whatever. Were they um, discolored, though? Was his skin reddish, pinkish? What was it? Or did you see it then? Or not, no, it was not till later that okay. I really, like, paid attention and should have been, like, okay, well, you know, because I did later on. I mm -hmm. on it, but she couldn't ask about later. But, okay. Um, so, yeah, so, like, our arms, I mean, our arms, um, his arms, and then we get in the truck or whatever, and then we drive off. So then we come back. And so I'm, of course, and, like, I text Harley, I text Albert, you know, what had happened, and I said, you know, this is what happened. I tell Harley, this is what happened. Don't paint it when you come home. Because the house, at this point in time, we get back in, smells like nothing but smoke. Mm -hmm. And so nothing but smoke at this point in time, and it was just like I couldn't get the smoke out. Even opening up the like windows and all those things, I couldn't get the smoke out. Um, so that was that so was. So what like what the, happened with these covers that you used to put out the flame? Well, the covers were either left there because um, I remember getting the stuff, some of the stuff, and putting outside in the trash can, which I even showed the people when they got there that I put it in a trash can. Do you guys have singular trash cans for each house there, or just? Do you have a dumpster or what? You really like it. It's a big trash. It's just a big brown trash. One of the wheel ones you wheel yeah, out yeah. and put by the curb. Okay. Yeah. So it was just one of those. Um, and it wasn't, no one was like, whatever. But we did want our to like, like come home. Like come, not necessarily come home and be for that. But we maybe like had updated a little bit to Albert because we were like, Thinking, you know, like, oh, he'll be upset and, like, want to come home or, you know, like, whatever, because he was, like, worried or, uh -huh. you know, like, whatever. So, I mean, my message to Albert probably was a little bit, like, uh, a little more over exaggeration just because I was wondering. So, when you say we, did you talk with the kids about, let's get Albert home? No, no, no. We, we, we did sit down. And because when I was asking him, like, was this, you know, did you do this on accident? Was this an accident? Was, you know, whatever. And so we were just talking about, you know, like the whole thing. Everybody was in one room. Uh, Lena, we were all in the bedroom at the time, which was our bedroom upstairs. Okay. So we were all in the bedroom upstairs, and it was just, you know, just talking and, you know, whatever. And I said, I got to let your daddy know. And then I was, I was not going to tell him. That was the original thing. It was not to tell him. It was just to fix it and not tell him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because then I was like, if I just do that, then we don't have to, you know. We we'll don't have to worry about it. Right. Uh, but then that was just an opportunity to be like, oh, well, maybe Albert is like, well, I'll just come back home. Or, you know, because it was hard, like, you know, always, all of us just there, going through all these memories and, and doing all these things without him, you know, mm -hmm. being there. Oh, no, I get it. So that was. That was so did Gannon part. agree that was a good idea to kind of play it up a little bit? Did he agree? Yeah. We all, we all were in like an agreement. So. so how did you play it up? Was the fire really not that big, and you made it like it was a big deal? Or well, to to whenever just we to were, get Al to say, hey, when, maybe I should get back home. When we were explaining it to to people in general, like that was our whole like, 
oh my gosh, it was like, uh, whatever, like, because if like, you had my phone, you saw that, like, if we, the people that we messaged, we made it more of like a, you know, like a bigger situation, like, than what it, than what it really was. And, yeah, because I couldn't understand how a, a candle could make a big fire, because my wife lights candles yeah. all the time around the house, and if we knocked them over, and if you knock it over, kind of nothing happens. Yeah. I mean, it might singe the carpet a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, I've seen the pictures, and I'm surprised that, you know, that much of the carpet was burned. Well, it was probably because, I, I mean, I don't know, but I know that we did go, like, push down on the carpet, and it was on the cover, which was the cover was wrapped up on him. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, like... That's what... I was just curious about the burn itself on the carpet, because that yes. looks awfully big for a candle. I didn't even think that was even big. Was that well, really big? Yeah. I mean, oh. that big for a candle, because, like I said, my wife, we look like a a church sometimes with all the candles she lights. Yeah. We have dogs running around and kids. And yeah, whatever. yeah, no, it was. So I was just surprised a candle could make, you know, a big black thing in the carpet that much. That it might have been held there for a little while. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. he tried to set the yeah, place on fire Yeah, I don't know about, I don't, but see, the thing is, I don't know that Gana would try to, like, purposely, like, set something on fire. I don't know. I know that he did tell me later that he thought that I was coming downstairs and he had he was playing his game. So, so he was know. playing his game when he knocked the candle over? Yeah, so he did tell us, he told me and Lena and all of us that when we were all talking together, he told us that he thought I was coming downstairs like to catch him on his game or whatever. Oh, and that's why he knocked it over? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if he accidentally or thought, you know, whatever. I just know he said that he thought. But did he take any responsibility for knocking the candle over or did it just say it happened or what? No, he did say that. Okay. He did say that he had that he had done it, that he had started it or whatever. And I asked, that's why I kept asking him, like, did you do it on purpose? That's what I'm curious about. Or did you, you know, was it an accident? He told me an accident. He thought I was coming downstairs. So, and to me, sir, we could afford to buy another yeah, for sure. sofa uh -huh. and another carpet. Now, that's not, like, that's not a problem. Like, I mean, you're talking about, like, things that we had and nice things that we can afford to buy that. So that's not, that was not a point of contention and Gannon very well would have known that too. So did it burn, it burned the sofa also? I don't think it burned the sofa. Okay. I don't think it burned the sofa. I'm just saying like in general in the area, whether if it would have burned sofa, TV, all that. We, right. Did he light the candle? We could afford or, or who to lit do that it. candle, do you know? The candle was, he had already lit the candle because the dogs were... And so he had already lit the candle, which we Does allowed. Does he normally do that? Yeah, we allowed him to be. He could light the candle if he wanted to. He was allowed to open like packages that came. That's where I was telling Albert. All good night. And I am in the bed, just like relaxing or whatever. And I hear the alarm on fire, 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 fire. So I just. Immediately freaking out. The next 30 minutes of that, 30 minutes ish, was a glare. Not like a glare. So, like, what, where I went, like, I went into protection. And I got the dogs, and Lena, and took her outside because they were the first people I saw upstairs. You know what I mean? So I was thinking, get the safe people out first, you know. But I come back to get ready to run down the stairs to go back to get G, and I had thoughts on. So I slipped down the whole stairway or whatever. That's how my blood gets on the baseboard. I bust my head against the baseboard because I was running so fast down the stairs. To get down to where I see smoke at this point. As soon as I see the smoke, I go into panic mode. Like, I'm like having flashbacks from, you know, like all the fires I've experienced. I run back upstairs. Run back out the front door again, and then realize Cannon's downstairs. Go back downstairs. And then I run back down the stairs again. Anna's on the sofa, and the fire is around the sofa. 
So I reach over to grab him, and when I do, he was like wrapped in the covers. So I grab the covers, I pull the covers, and when we both go back on the fire, the last part of that was just being down on the fire. I didn't remember anything to do until we were in the truck, but all of us were safe in the truck. So, like, I don't remember running out at that point in time. I know that I did because the alarm doorbell camera so that we run out the house. But I don't know if I did. I like, just so scared there. It was just so traumatic. I don't know what happened from the time we went down in the fire to going out to the car, except by doorbell, like, you know, the camera system. So they have camera footage. Uh, I go out, we get in the car, and I just pull off. Because again, you know me, I'm a runner. If you saw smoke coming from a room that you knew a child was inside of, would you first go take other children and animals to a vehicle outside and then grab a dust mask all before checking on the child in the room with the fire? If you extinguished a fire in your home significant enough to fill a room with smoke, would your impulse be to drive away? Would you not call or seek any help after a fire injured two people? At 9.46 p.m., a video was recorded on Letitia's phone. She claims the phone accidentally started recording, so the video is made to seem unintentional. So nothing is shown on the video, only blurry motion walking from room to room. In the recording, she asked Gannon if he set the fire on purpose. Through tears, Gannon promises that it was an accident. She then guilt trips him, saying that they will have to sell things in order to pay for the damage, or they could be kicked out of the house. At the end, Gannon says, I'm just worried about my burns, as Letitia attempts to silence and to speak over him. When she released the video online days later, she removed the part about his burns. What follows is difficult to listen to, and sadly, were ultimately the last words that most of his loved ones heard from Gannon's voice. Two, I just don't know what to do. Well, devastating. Initially, Scott, I can't lie when the TMZ information. Gannon, I promise this is the last time I'm going to ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? Okay, you promise. You promise. Pinky promise. Okay, all right. So, listen. Listen. We're, all right, I'm, we're going to have to sell stuff to fix it, okay? Okay. So we figure out what we got to sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever, because we got to get it fixed. So lady, don't be mad at us and kick aside the house. Okay. You got it? You got it? I'm just worried about my friend. Okay. Shh. Listen, 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 listen. So tomorrow. Albert eventually had an opportunity to confront Letitia about the video while on a recorded pretext phone call. My son, you obviously don't care about my son if you're gonna do all the things you did in that fucking candle video. That was bullshit. That's the same shit you tried to do to me and you did it to my son. That was horrible. You should go to jail just for that shit, Tisha. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's fucking abuse and you know it. You know, had that little boy. No, you had him crying when all he thought he had made was an accident, and you had him thinking he was gonna have to sell his switch and his toys on the fucking video you put out there. I didn't see that. You put it out there. That's your fucking abuse. I didn't think he was gonna sell his switch. Yeah, that's or what? Well, that was where it was going. The couch or we gotta sell this or that. I heard your words. And the couch was messed up. I was telling And I heard you make him cry too. Where's my son? He's already crying. Where's my son? 
The following day, Letitia defended her actions. Think. You're trying to think that just because I didn't abuse Dan emotionally in that video or nothing. The whole point of that was he was so upset. It wasn't about, it was meaning I was going to replace the items for him. It was trying to be, okay, don't worry about it. It's a secret. I'm not going to say anything. Letitia had once made an accusation that Gannon had threatened her with a knife. Albert did not believe her. Gannon was not an angry or a violent child, and he testified that he never saw any behavior that suggested Gannon had it out for Letitia. In addition to helping the kids with custody situations and emotions, the knife accusation led Al to get the kids into counseling on base. He hoped it would bring any issues to light and protect Gannon from the false accusation. Al tried to invoke his right as a parent not to have Tisha in the room at the initial intake, but Letitia insisted until she was allowed to be present for a portion of the session. She knew the accusation would be discussed. Perhaps this had been another learning experience for Letitia. So after the candle incident, she asked Gannon over and over until she could provoke him to admit responsibility for it, just in case Albert didn't believe her version. Or perhaps Tisha set up the candle incident to make Gannon look like a destructive child. Or, maybe just being a kid, Gannon really did accidentally cause a fire that night. Her changing accounts and lack of detail about the actual flames and damage make that seem unlikely. Maybe she waited until Gannon dozed off, set the fire, hoping to cause an emergency to bring Albert home from Oklahoma to ruin his trip, or to punish him for leaving. Maybe this was Letitia's first attempt to murder Gannon, and for whatever reason, it didn't go as she planned. Harley and Lena contribute more information about the candle incident. Harley was still at work at the time, and had the following text conversation with her mother. Busy and distracted at work, Harley has trouble understanding what her mother is telling her. 9.54 p.m. Letitia Do panic, but Gannon turned on a candle downstairs and set the downstairs on fire. I had to get the dogs and Lena out and run back downstairs and jump on him with a cover and put it out. I kept jumping on it. He is fine. He is scared and saying sorry and freaking out. Harley, the fire was on chance? Letitia, no, chance was upstairs. The house is smoky. Harley, the fire was on chance? Letitia, from fire, I jumped on him with a cover. Harley, oh, okay. Letitia, I never said chance. Harley, jumped on him, OMG. Letitia, yes, but never said chance, read again. Harley, I just had a heart attack, where was Sadie? Letitia, she was in the chair. Harley, OMG, by the fire? Letitia, Lena grabbed Sadie, and I grabbed chance. Nah, all of us were upstairs. He was downstairs. Harley. Gannon was downstairs. Letitia. Yes. Harley. OMG, how did he knock it over? Letitia. Yes, said he must have fell asleep. Harley. So it wasn't knocked over? Letitia. Yes, OMG, can you read? He must have knocked it over while asleep unless he was awake and lied, but he acted sorry for sure. Harley. All. Letitia. 
My arm is burnt jumping on him. Harley. OMG, the fire was on Gannon. Letitia. No, the cover was that he was wrapped in. I jumped on him, though, because he had the cover around him. This is how Harley explained at trial what happened when she got home from work after clocking out at 1018. Did you talk to your mom on your way home uh, from Massage Envy that night? I normally tell her that I'm leaving, so probably yes. So, what do you see when you get home? Describe to the jury what you see in the house when you got home from work. Um, I get home. My mom and Lena are in the living room, and they're telling me about the fire. Um, Gannon wasn't upstairs at this point. So, who you said they are telling you? Were both Lena and your mom telling you about what happened downstairs? Yes. What did your mom tell you at this point when you get home? She told me that the candle was knocked over. Um, she thinks that he was playing on his Nintendo and he wasn't supposed to be, so that maybe that's how he knocked it over. Um, that after the fire, they ran outside and she called her fireman friend and asked if the fumes in the house were okay for us to go back inside and they said yes and she said that when they were in the street gannon was screaming that he hates his life and screaming different things what did you think about that last part your mother just told you about gannon life i didn't think that the candle thing was a big deal so it was just still so like confusing. Was your mother concerned about Albert finding out about this and being upset about it? Normally, Albert's not the one to get mad about like stuff getting messed up, so. When she told you about Gannon going out in the street and yelling that he hates his life and things like that, did that sound like the Gannon that you knew? No, he hasn't done that before. You said that it was Lena and your mom upstairs when you got home on the 26th after work. Mm -hmm. Do you know where Gannon was at? Downstairs. Did you go downstairs? Yes. What did you see when you went downstairs? Him laying in his bed. Did you go into his room? Um, by the doorway. Was he asleep? I don't remember. Did you talk to him? No. Was the light on in his room? I don't know. Is that the last time you saw him? Yes. Were there, window, were there any windows open in the basement when you went down there? Yes, the windows were open. It was cold down there. How many windows were open down in the basement? I don't know. It was January 26th at... Do you know about what time it is now when you went down to Gannon's room? It was a little later because my mom was like, let's go tell Gannon goodnight. So that's why we went down there. Is there anything unusual about your mom saying, let's go tell Gannon goodnight? Not something that she normally would do. And it's not something she would normally do? Correct. That surprising to you when she said that? Yes. She go down there with you when you went to Gannon's room. Yes, we both went down there. Do you recall your mom talking to Gannon? She said goodnight to him. She was like, goodnight. Do you know whether or not Gannon responded? I don't remember, no. So was Gannon's bedroom window open as well? I don't know. Was it cold down in the basement? Yes. Did you sleep down in the basement that night? No. Where was your room within the house? In the basement. Would it have been close to Gannon's room, or was it like on the other side of the basement area? On the other side of the basement. Was your room cold in there? I don't remember. Why'd you sleep upstairs? Because it was cold downstairs. You could still smell like the fumes and like everything just felt like 
everything in the house just felt weird. Why did it feel weird? Because my mom made the comments. Um, she was like, Gannon's acting weird. I don't know what's wrong with him. Um, she said that she was scared. Who else slept upstairs? Lena. Who, is there anyone else in the house? No. So it's you, your mom, Lena, and Gannon? Yes. Gannon's the only one sleeping in the basement? Yes. It's cold down there? Yes. Are we talking freezing cold, or was it just colder than the upstairs? Colder than the upstairs. That's why you didn't sleep down there? Yeah. And where did you sleep? In particular, what bed? In my parents' room. Did you sleep with your mom in the same bed? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, sorry. There you go. Okay, good. Um, Young, if you could find a reasonable breaking point in the next five Unlike Harley, eight-year-old Lena was at home during the incident. After Gannon went missing, she was given a forensic interview. A forensic interview of a young child is a special interview that is entirely child-led. No leading questions are asked, and no details or information come from the interviewer. This is what Lena told an interviewer named Karen about the fire. That night, there was a fire. Gannon forgot to put his candle out, and the candle got knocked over. Tisha saved Bubba's. Tisha put blankets over Gannon to put out the fire. Gannon had a little bit of fire on his shirt. When Lena was describing where the fire was on Gannon, she pointed to her left side lower abdomen. It is unsure if Gannon's shirt was on fire. Lena said when the fire happened, she was in her bedroom on her bed. Lena heard the fire alarm going off. Tisha said, load up in the car with the puppies. Gannon was freaking out, saying, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Tisha kept saying, okay, it's okay. They drove around in the car. When they got back home, Tisha told Lena to go into Tisha's room because she did not want Lena to go into her own bedroom. Lena said Tisha did not want Lena in her own room because people can look through her window. Lena was in Tisha's room and watching the puppies. Tisha was downstairs with Gannon. Lena could hear Gannon crying. Karen said, what happened next? Lena said then it was the next day. Karen began, asked Lena how Gannon's shirt caught on fire and how she knew that. Lena said the shirt did catch on fire, and she knew this because Tisha told her. Tisha showed Lena her burn mark. When Lena was describing where Tisha got burned, she pulled her sleeve up on her left arm and pointed to the bottom of her forearm. Gannon's burns were also on his arm, but Lena did not know what arm it was on. Karen asked how she knew this. Lena said, because Tisha told me. Lena said Tisha was freaking out and described this as Tisha in her room taking several very deep breaths and then said she fell asleep in her bed. When Tisha was freaking out, Gannon was in Lena's bed because there was smoke downstairs. Tisha and Lena put Gannon in Gannon's bed. Gannon was crying, but not anymore when he went into Gannon's bed. Gannon did not say anything when he was crying. Lena said when it was time to go to bed, Gannon was taken to his room by Tisha and Lena so Lena could sleep in her bed. Lena said when Tisha moved Gannon to his room, Gannon was asleep. How Lena described Gannon being carried to bed matched how Letitia told Al in the call, in her words, toted him downstairs. Gannon is recorded in hysterics at 9.46. Harley's commute home took approximately 25 minutes, clocking out at 10.18 
puts her getting home around 1045. She testified that her mother asked her to come tell him goodnight, something they didn't usually do. They stood in the doorway, said goodnight, and Harley could not remember if Gannon made any response. So Gannon went from hysterics and in pain to being in such a deep sleep he had to be carried downstairs to his bed all in one hour's time. The medical examiner testified that Gannon had the prescription opiate hydrocodone in his system when he died. He was either drugged before the fire was set or after to silence him. Albert had a woodworking accident where he cut the tip of his finger off. He was prescribed hydrocodone, but he found that over-the-counter pain relievers did the trick, so his leftover prescription was in a bedroom drawer. The bottle was not found when police searched the home. Letitia's attempts to downplay the severity of Gannon's burns actually achieved the opposite. Each time his burns are mentioned, she insists that she gave him no medicine, saying that he was fine and not complaining of any pain. Anyone who has mildly burned themselves while cooking knows that any burn hurts. She tried to make it seem minor, describing it as little bubbles on his skin. What she is actually describing are second-degree burns. Imagine for a moment a blanket on fire in contact with your skin, and afterwards blisters appearing in the burned area on your forearms. I imagine Gannon was in a great deal of pain and frightened as any injured child would be, matching exactly how he sounded in that video. Second-degree burns and Letitia insists that she didn't even need to give him children's Tylenol. It's a curious denial, an odd detail to lie about. At autopsy, children's Tylenol was present, in addition to the hydrocodone. She claimed to have put aloe and bandaged the wounds, but when asked later, she could not remember exactly where the wounds were and which arms were bandaged. According to both girls, Gannon was in no condition to speak to either of them that night. So, like many things in this case, only Letitia will ever truly know what happened to Gannon that night. When Gannon's body was eventually found, medical examiners were unable to tell if or how badly his arms had been burned. And finally, regarding the candle incident. Letitia made a curious statement while describing Gannon's burns to detectives two days later. So then I was like freaked out because I was like, I didn't know that that his arms were, were like that. So I'm like crying because, mm -hmm. and, and this is where I have to start telling you, you know, like some like very, like I was scared because my thought process was Albert is going to kill me. Like, because I made a mistake as a parent and mm -hmm. forgot to, like, really check him down. And he really got a little bit more burned than he should have. Mm -hmm. So I was freaking out because it's like, he's going to kill me. Gannon really got burned more than he should have. Should have. Perhaps Letitia slipped up by saying that. Maybe she set the fire as a twisted manipulation tactic, and he was severely burned, more than he should have. So now she had to hide the evidence by making Gannon disappear. Although there is some evidence up to this point that hints at premeditation before the fire, after midnight, premeditation begins without a doubt.